Welcome. This is Derek Weston, moderator of the Presbyterian HIV Network. This Sunday, June 5th, is HIV Long-Term Survivors Awareness Day. This day honors those who have lived decades with HIV and raises awareness of their needs, issues, and journeys. To commemorate this day, I spoke with George Kerr III, longtime moderator of Presbyterian HIV Network, about the importance of this day, the changes that have happened over the years, and where the voices of long-term survivors fit in the movement to end the epidemic. George, thanks for being with me to talk a little bit about Long-Term Survivors Day. Thank you for having me. Um, so I, I want to ask, um, I want to start this question off, like, why, what is the significance of long-term survivors recognition? What it, why is it so important that we have these conversations about long-term survivors? I would say, as someone that's been living with HIV for 27 years, that we have to celebrate that, um, that victory. Because when I first was diagnosed, we didn't even know if we were going to live one, five, 10 years. Yeah. And so it's important that we understand um, where we've been so that we know our history moving forward. Do you feel like long-term survivors often get forgotten in the conversation? It seems like there's so much conversation about prevention and ending the epidemic. Um, does it feel like there's there's sort of a overlooking of the long-term survivors? I definitely think that there has been, um, particularly for people that were born with HIV. Mm. This is all they know. And so um, for us to have these conversations and exclude them, which I feel like we do most of the time. Mm. And so I really work hard to make sure that we, they feel like they are wanted and they are a part of this community. That's an important uh, observation because I think that that part of the conversation is often left out, but there are people who are born with HIV and you're right, there's, there's, they haven't known anything else and that's not often part of the conversation. Um, so how do you feel, what are, what are some of the major uh, changes for the better that you've seen over the years of, of living with HIV in terms of recognition, in terms of care? Where do you feel like there have been improvements over, over the decades that you've, you've lived with HIV? I would say one of the biggest thing is the um, advancement of medication. Um, at one point I was taking 27 pills a day. Wow. Five times a day. And so, you know, and there was a lot of restrictions. You can do this, you can do that, but you can't. And so that really plays a point. I'm down to two pills a day. Wow. And even though we have advanced, it's not a simple, well, just take the pill. You know, some of us have pill fatigue. We've taken pills so often. So I think the advancement of injectables is real important. I think the importance of U equals U really makes that big change. Um, not for me personally, but I know that in parts of the United States, HIV is still criminalized. And so we need to address that. The faith community has to address that and change those laws. Yeah. And just, just for clarification, can you define for people what U equals U means? Un, um, undetectable is untransmittable. Yeah. And so along with that, a lot of stigma around words. You be clean, I'm clean, you be clean too, those type. And so we really need to understand that if someone is undetectable, they cannot transmit the HIV virus. And that's been a huge push in the HIV community that helping people understand that if they're, if they, that there is medication out there for them, there is care for them. And if they can get their levels down to an undetectable level, um, safer for them, safer for their partners. And that's an important part of the conversation. Um, where do you feel, what do you feel like the role is for long-term survivors in faith communities in terms of their voice and what they add? what you add 
Um, and and even in in interfaith conversations, what do you, where do you feel like the long term survivor voice is beneficial? I think it's in on every level. I work with the Interfaith Health Platform, which is an international organization that's talking about faith and HIV. I work within the U.S. HIV AIDS Faith Coalition and addressing these issues on every single level. And for me, we will not be able to end this epidemic by 2030 if the faith community does not lead us in that direction. And it's important because I, th I think that um, you're able to talk a little bit about how the faith community's response has evolved. And, and where have you seen that in the last couple of decades? How has the voice and support of the faith community evolved over the last couple of decades? Well, there, there's less um, pointing fingers and say, you deserve this, or, you know, you got this because of God's sin, you know, you're uh, part of the LGBTQ community, so we're not going to even discuss about your, um, your risk or addressing those issues. So I believe that the faith community has really kind of stepped up and helped in every aspect can they do more? Yes, but we're moving in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. Um, what What do you think is is for for ending the epidemic? What do you think the role of long term survivors is in that conversation about ending the epidemic? And and you mentioned the twenty thirty uh, target. Um, What's what's the role of long term survivors in, in getting us closer to ending the epidemic? Um, as a friend of mine talks about, we need to be in the kitchen mm. when we're prepared. We don't need to be at the table. We need to be in the kitchen when we're putting these ingredients together. We know how we can get there, but we need to address some of the major issues that put us um, off track and institutional racism. Mm -hmm. um, is one of them um, housing, a lack of housing, poverty, um, lack of education. You know, not talking about HIV from the pulpit, not talking about sex, and putting it as a uh, a bad thing. We're all having sex, so we need to address those issues from the pulpit, and so the faith community can lead us in that right direction. Yeah. Yeah. So what is what is your as we kind of wrap up here, kind of what is your hope for the next five, 10 years of of the ways that we're we're dealing with the epidemic, the ways that we're speaking about it and the ways that we are active and and working to really uh, confront this and bring it to an end? I think um, there needs to be more involvement of the places of worship. Um, there are a number of us that's doing this work, but we're going to need more. And it, this is going to have to be done on the community level. We cannot get to where we're at without addressing individual communities and the issues that they face. We need to involve more the research community. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I really applaud the Center for AIDS Research and everything that they're doing across the United States in those 18 jurisdictions. And I think that we need to continue that type of dialogue about having all of us in the kitchen pulling this together. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's absolutely right. And I think that um, recognizing that this is an attainable goal, that the 2030 is, is not out of reach, that if we actually are talking about this, addressing it, working and, and connecting across across faith communities um, in our community, that this is something that we can achieve. Um, did you have any last words, anything else that you wanted to throw in for uh, the good of the order? I would just say congratulations on your new role as a moderator for the Presbyte HIV Network. And that I know that I am leaving this in your very capable hands. So well, thank I, you. well, thank you for that. And and I am I am building on a legacy that you have you have left for me 
and for the rest of the PHIVN that you have been diligently working on this topic, sometimes uh, in, a, in a very lonely situations uh, where, where it's felt like you're the only one out there. And uh, I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful for your witness. I'm grateful for your life and all the work that you've done to bring this awareness. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to carrying on uh, the good work that you've, you've left for PHIVN to do. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to contact us, you can reach us at phivn.pcusa at gmail.com.